in this circuit, we're going to look at the 4013 D-type flip-flop again. And the first thing you should notice is my timing diagram is incomplete. My timing diagram, no, my system diagram is incomplete because I have here a monostable. I have a pink wire here connecting it to the clock. So we'll draw that wire in. But crucially for this circuit, I also have this blue wire here connecting the data and Q bar. Now how does that look on a diagram? Well Q bar links round and connects into the data. So that's the circuit that I have here. My output is this green LED just here representing Q. So what I need to do is just write that on to remind me. This is the output Q. And I can find a label to remind us like that. So as I said before, you can't really analyze these things as a timing diagram. There is my timing diagram. Now, so far, I've got clock just here, and I've got Q, which is currently off, and we're going to see what happens. So when I press the clock, which is this rising edge just here, Q comes on. So that's very good. When we press the clock again, Q goes off. And we press the clock again, and it goes on. We press the clock again, it goes off, and so on, and so forth. Every time we push the clock, the output changes state. The question we should really ask ourselves is how does this happen? So I'll just finish off my timing diagram there. Now, let's have a think about not Q, but Q bar. Because remember, Q bar is also connected to the data. And we should know, quite useful if you could see that, and we should know that for a D-type flip-flop, on the rising edge of the clock, then Q becomes whatever the data is. So when Q was zero, Q bar was one, and therefore data was one. So on the rising edge of the clock, like that, what happened is data was one, so Q became one, and then Q bar and data became zero. On the next rising edge of the clock, data is zero because Q bar is zero, therefore Q becomes zero, and data becomes one, and Q bar becomes one, and so on, and so forth. like that. So this is called a divide by two counter. I wonder why. Well, the reason is because here I have one, two, three, four, five, six clock pulses, and here I have one, two, three output pulses. The frequency of the output is half the frequency of the inputs.